Ankatu. Yes, Angali. Uh, said Sri Lanka is handled mainly by said USA and it has been found by Amila Basnaika on 1st of September 2018. So in said Sri Lanka, there are some chapters. So one chapter is said Spera or University of Peradenia. So it helps students to develop their technical and uh, leadership skills by providing opportunities to manage and participate in national projects as well as to attend conferences, publish their work and develop their professional network. Sandali. When we come to the today's session, we hope to make you aware about the future space trends and give an idea about the innovations, researchers and observations. Uh, and also we hope to discuss about how students can get involved with this project. So, Lakna? Yeah, as our topic is future space trends in Sri Lanka, we can subdivide this topic as space observations and space technologies. So to, uh, to talk about more on these two topics, uh, we would like to warmly welcome Professor K.S.P. Chandana Chayaratna, Director of Astronomy and Space Science Unit, Department of Physics, University of Colombo, and Research Scientist, Mr. Janaka Adizungi, Astronomy Division, Arthur C. Clark Institute. Okay, guys, at the end of this session, you can ask action from Professor Chandana and Janaka and the Surya sir. And also during this session, you can chat through with the chat box. So let's start our discussion with Professor Chandana. So Professor Chandana, are you there? Professor Chandana, are you here? Can you hear me now? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. So. Yes. I would like to know about the ongoing space observation researchers using telescope technologies in deep space. Actually, when you consider space science, it is uh, many people mis are mistaken it by uh, saying that it is uh, maybe rocket science. But uh, this space science has a uh, broader uh, definition. Uh, so we have to start from there and then we can discuss about uh, the future trends etc. Uh, let me go to the, I don't know if I can get it, uh, maybe Wikipedia uh, and share the, uh, share the screen. Uh, yes. <clears throat> so you can, you can see that uh, uh, Space science uh, is the, there, there, there are several fields, right? Branches of space science, astronomy and astrophysics and space plasma physics. That means actually, uh, uh, the basically the uh, the what's happening in the sun and how it affects our Earth and the, the uh, that is uh, um, the space with the what we call is in between the sun and the Earth. Uh, that is a major uh, branch and uh, even uh, galactic astronomy and aerospace engineering that means uh, what we call this uh, uh, the rocket science etc uh, so uh, the, so those are the uh, areas that uh, we consider as uh, uh, so it is not uh, limited to a single uh, area and also uh, it has uh, some related interdisciplinary fields like astrobiology biology, astrobotany, or astrobiochemistry, etc., etc. So, cosmology, uh, so, uh, so this is uh, uh, basically a lot of, uh, you know, wide, wide uh, area. Uh, so, when we consider that space science applications, uh, 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 it's, it's not uh, actually not only astronomy, uh, but um, it's rather away from astronomy, I will say, that is, uh, uh, but uh, it's, um, the, the charged particles coming from uh, space as well as from the sun. Uh, so uh, things are there. So it is uh, a wide, wide, wide area, right? Uh, so that is uh, um, what I would like to do as an introduction. Uh, so, so I give this uh, picture. Uh, 
from the Wikipedia. Uh, so scientific uh, <coughs> uh, space exploration is also part of it, yes. Um, but it is not the only thing. So it's a wide area that uh, how are we going to do that the trends of this space science, uh, uh, how are we going to uh, you know, uh, develop it in Sri Lanka is the question in this session, I suppose. Mm, uh, so I think uh, we can start uh, the views from uh, uh, Janak also, and then we go on uh, again, yes. Uh, Mr. Janaka Dussur is there or? Yes, uh, next, uh, yeah. thank you, sir. Uh, next, uh, I would like to move to Janaka, sir. What uh, actually Arthur Siktak Institute is doing for the future space development of Sri Lanka? Yes, uh, I think uh, you can hear me right now. Uh, uh, <laughs> Actually, uh, my identification is uh, name is different. Uh, it's in the email, uh, so I just log it uh, usually from my son's account. Okay, so but I uh, you can see me as email. Uh, so anyway, uh, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, and first of all, I would like to thank Saint Pera Deniya chapter uh, to invite me for this such a uh, very nice. Uh, uh, timely uh, webinar on future space trends in Sri Lanka. Uh, as well as I would like to uh, uh, say that uh, it's a very pleasure for me to have uh, Professor Jayaratna, uh, Chandan Jayaratna sir, because uh, uh, he is uh, my uh, first teacher in university as well as at the moment uh, he is my uh, PhD supervisor. So it's nice to uh, be with you sir also. And uh, yeah, so let, uh, let me start in that way. Uh, since we have uh, uh, a discussion on the space trends in Sri Lanka, uh, now it's a very timely uh, topic to discuss. Uh, when you look at uh, the other countries, now uh, they are well ahead of us at the moment. Uh, so uh, this uh, special area, we have not paid, uh, I think, much attention on the past uh, few years. Uh, so therefore, we are still in the very uh, primitive, uh, very uh, basic stage, uh, and then we have to go a very long way uh, to catch up the, the new trends, uh, the, the, the international trends and international uh, the levels. So we have to do a lot of work on this area. So I, I, I think uh, in that sense, this uh, kind of uh, series, uh, webinar series, awareness programs are very important uh, because we need more and more students to be in this, uh, to be involved in this particular area. Therefore, we can build a, a very good capacity in the country, which is needed to uh, improve, uh, enhance this particular uh, area, with, uh, which is very important. Uh, so, uh, for your question, uh, that is uh, what we are doing at the Arthur C. Clarke Institute at the moment. Uh, so, I would like to share a few uh, words about, uh, I mean, I would like to introduce Arthur C. Clarke Institute first. Some of you are uh, familiar with the institute, but uh, I hope that it is better to give a uh, overview about the our institute. So, I will share a few slides with you. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, okay, I think uh, you can see the uh, the slides now. Uh, can you see the slides? I think uh, yeah, you can see it, right? So uh, uh, now here, uh, now uh, this is like. Institute is actually it's a it's a research and develop, uh, development institute. Uh, it was uh, established in uh, uh, our institute is established in 1984 uh, by uh, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, 
so uh, by 1984 by uh, uh, i mean uh, as a part of uh, uh, a donation actually uh, this received from Ad dr atasika institute atasika so he was actually uh, initiated our institute in 1984 uh, with his donation as well as the government also just passed a uh, 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 amendment at the parliament and we have to uh, establish an institute for research and development uh, so therefore we our institute was established as a constitutional uh, institute uh, by act of parliament so that is the beginning of our research institute uh, in 1984 so from since then now we are working on different areas now if you look at the uh, organizational structure in our institute we are working on different areas now uh, especially our vision mission is based on space technology to uh, introduce and in modern technologies uh, in uh, space technology space science and then uh, just to give some sustainability research to the community so here we have a few areas we are focusing on electronics and microelectronics communication uh, then information technology uh, space technology applications uh, industrial services all these areas are we are, uh, we are covering at the moment but we are focusing uh, from past uh, few years we are focusing on space technology applications because now uh, we need to uh, uh, enhance or we need to improve uh, we need to make it uh, Uh, we need a very uh, huge uh, impact on the space technology at the moment, which is actually just uh, looking the country, looking uh, the uh, the society. So we are very much focused on this area, space technology and applications. So in that space technology application, as the professor. Sarah also mentioned that it is not only astronomy. Uh, now some people actually some. students think about how uh, the space technology is only the yeah, astronomy and space and but uh, when you look at the space technology it's a very vast area and there are uh, different areas like research uh, in rsgis that means if you take uh, some data from space and how do you use those uh, space based data uh, the satellite data and then how do you use for uh, the development of the country to design the Uh, the urban city and then maybe agriculture. There are a lot of areas. So therefore, we are focusing on that. And uh, these are the main uh, areas we are at the moment we are involved in. Basically, is research and development. Uh, so we are focusing on that. And the high tech uh, consultancy services. So we do the consultancy services whenever necessary for the industry. Uh, performance testing and collaborative services. Uh, then. Uh, continuous professional development programs the training programs also going on which is very essential advanced diagnostics and recovery of sophisticated electronic systems that means uh, uh, some uh, kind of uh, diagnostics and then the repair and uh, then rehabilitation uh, of systems and all this and especially the national capacity development in space technology and education so this is the area now we are very much focusing on that Uh, so uh, here, I would like, like to share. Actually, uh, I have to mention our director uh, general here also, uh, Engineer Sanat Panar and Nige. He is our director general at the moment at the leading the institute. So uh, we have started some uh, uh, national type of programs, national importance, uh, some programs with national importance. So this is a one of the program. the national hub for receiving and distribution of earth observation satellite data so this program is already started and it is going on it's progressing very well uh, so we are going to make a satellite ground station to receive the satellite data uh, and it is very important because now the satellite data has a huge potential in different areas like uh, agriculture Uh, then the urban development, uh, then the, uh, so the, the education as well. So there are different applications of the data. So it's very important to have such a station in Sri Lanka, and 
it will be not only uh, just providing the satellite data for the different authorities in Sri Lanka, it will make a huge uh, uh, potential to make a lot of opportunities to engineers and scientists to work in this area. So that is the other importance of this program. So this is going on at the moment. And then I would like to share some of the minor programs also. Minor means these are some other uh, areas we are working on. Uh, now we have a drone uh, development program, drone, a drone application development program. For drones, are, you, know, you already know that they are actually using for different purposes. Drones can be used for a lot of uh, aspects in a different areas. So this is a one application we are developing uh, for agriculture purpose. And then the satellite data. So we uh, we have a uh, different uh, department to analyze the satellite data uh, for uh, different applications like uh, uh, especially agriculture. Now uh, this is one example I'm showing that we try to estimate the heavy uh, yield uh, using satellite data. This is a pilot project uh, was, uh, carried out for Ampara district and this is very successful. These are the point, uh, projects we are at the moment involved in. So with that, I will just uh, stop my uh, session. Uh, so this is kind of an introduction where we are actually uh, at the moment in Sri Lanka what we are doing uh, in Arthasi Clark Institute. So I will uh, just go ahead uh, with uh, the other Areas later on. Okay. So we got a proper idea about the RTC clock. That's good. So when moving into the Chandana sir, Professor Chandana, can I get an opinion about the new innovations or observations regarding our topic? And what about the development in space observations technologies? Yeah, maybe so, now trying to get a uh, uh, slideshow. One, let me see whether I can do it. Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. We can hear you. Ah, so I was thinking that link was over. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, we start with uh, something uh, with the development, uh, what has happened in the past, and then what we are doing at our uh, University of Colombo 
astronomy and space science um, unit. Uh, uh, well, well, there are a lot of things to discuss, but uh, okay. So uh, maybe we start here, right? Hope you can you can uh, see uh, something. Can you see something like this? Yes, sir. Yeah. Now uh, this is um, uh, this is actually how we started when you consider the. Of course, we can go back to the history of the king's period and all how they, that that those days also we were uh, very good at astronomy and all. You know about uh, this uh, uh, this uh, this. Um, uh, Stargate and all sort of things, uh, and uh, you know there are those are some speculations also are there, but still uh, this, uh, that uh, even in Mahavansi you can find that uh, uh, that King Devanandi is the uh, uh, main uh, the, or the chief minister. His hobby was astronomy. So those days, even the the, the former archaeological commissioner in in uh, White People's Period 1902 or something that he has mentioned that. Uh, the Buddhist knowledge of astronomy and this uh, has and related to this one, of course. Uh, um, and uh, you, know, you know that, uh, but uh, when you consider the modern uh, astronomy, that uh, uh, I would say that the space science in this country, uh, that uh, it is one thing is more important. That is, this uh, telescope in the Columbia University, uh, which was there. Uh, of course, this uh, this many people don't know about this thing. That is why I want to uh, to to, uh, to uh, emphasize on this. Uh, uh, so this telescope inside you will find uh, this telescope, uh, which was in Kinkamali from 1896 uh, to 1905. That is the period 1906. That is the period where Einstein put forward his theories to the world about uh, the, um, the uh, the relativity. So uh, at that time, the best uh, observational astronomer was Sri Lanka, and his telescope is now with us in the Columbia University. He, the, the telescope, his name was Captain Molesworth. And he is a Sri Lankan, but his his uh, father was a British uh, governor of uh, railway governor. But uh, he is a Sri Lankan, and in the Trinko Naval Base, this telescope, with 12 and a half inch telescope, was there. And uh, and with this telescope, you can see that uh, several discoveries has been made of this, uh, right? Um, he was considered as the finest amateur planetary observer alive in the world during the decade 1996 to 1905. And the crater about 60 kilometers in diameter on the southern hemisphere of the Mars, named after him. Uh, you know, that is uh, after the Sri Lankan. Uh, the telescope goes to the history book of the world astronomy due to another finding the Jupiter's great south tropical disturbance. The dusky region in the planet's south tropical zone was first recorded by Major Paul 1901 uh, using his telescope. And several uh, other discoveries in Mars and Moon uh, were named after him. So this telescope uh, after his death was given to the Columbia University and you can see and this is a kind of a mechanical thing, and you know that when you look at the outer sky objects, it will not fix to a telescope view because the rotation of the Earth. So this one, they don't have electricity those days, so they, they are, it's a huge 50 kilogram uh, brass block, and when you keep it on a, a mechanical wheel system, the telescope automatically due to the you know heavy weight of that um, block, the telescope rotates at the speed of the um, of the um, uh, Earth. Um, uh, so uh, I think uh, right now, even right now in Sri Lanka, this kind of observatory is only available in this Columbia University one um, with such uh, large observatory um, uh, with the dome like this. 
right? You can open the dome. So um, uh, the telescopies is still there, but uh, during 1986 insurgency period, uh, of course, during the British um, period, uh, uh, there were aircraft uh, destroying cannons were fixed inside this one by the British, removing the telescope. Then in 1959, uh, some people called Professor Chandra Vikramasinghe, Ram Professor Samarnagar, Professor Asokamandis, those were students those days, so they have got together and formed this Astronomy Society in the Columbia University uh, and, um, and formed this uh, Astronomical Society and this telescope was resurrected. So that is, uh, was there till 1986 and 89. And then after this, uh, because it's brass, everything was brass, people have stolen it. Some Kudukaru has done it and say only to the Panchikavatta, and so now it is not in operational mode. But we got another small telescope. You can see the telescope at the edge of the uh, university playground. Uh, but this telescope is the forerunner of uh, astronomy and space science in this country because it has produced more than um, more than 200, I would say, astronomers, no astronomy course in the university those days, just because of this telescope and the society, people started to do, and all these um, people like Sarat Gunapala, then LSR and uh, Nali and something, all the people, uh, you know, those who are all over the country are because uh, world, they are in, in us and many places because of this telescope. Uh, right now, I am the advisor and uh, uh, of this uh, astronomy society, uh, so it's very old now, and you can see the inside also. So, but in uh, after this um, uh, forerunner is, is that forerunner's death, uh, that is people have stolen um, the things. Uh, then, uh, of course, 65 of the planetarium was established, and then, uh, uh, of course. Uh, I uh, was involved in uh, establishing another thing that was when I was the general secretary of Sri Lanka Asimu, the advance of science. There was a, a discussion or the request of JICA, and uh, I was chairing all these meetings uh, with Professor Samarnayaka, uh, and uh, we got this telescope. And you see this thing, and this is. Uh, um, uh, now this is about uh, uh, astronomy programs and all we started in uh, those days and then this telescope was again from JICA in 1992 to the Columbia University, it's that centimeter. But subsequently uh, we introduced this astronomy into the, actually I was in New Orleans, uh, introducing astronomy into the syllabus uh, with a lot of efforts, 92-94. And even to the A-level syllabus, I have introduced astronomy, but uh, someone has removed it again. Uh, so with those difficulties, um, because teachers are afraid to astronomy to teach. Uh, anyway, so now up to grade 6 to 9 is there. So that is how this uh, trend in Sri Lanka has developed. Uh, so with the interest of this one, um, uh, now uh, it is taught in a school. And that is why we are having this session even, I think. Uh, so astronomy can be used uh, to uh, to pe take people into the science, uh, to do science. Now we have a problem that we don't have enough people to do science system with subjects, commerce, arts, law, yes, many. But to do science and it is the, you know, the future depends on the, the scientist and the scientific knowledge and the technical, technical knowledge, those people because machine learning and robotics are catching up the whole world. As a result, uh, now we are trying to revise those syllabuses further because by year seven, in 20 years time, uh, there will be no, uh, no, um, uh, you know, no jobs for many people, 70% of the people in 20 years time. Uh, because three wheelers and all many cars will go automatically without drivers. So it is called artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotics will capture the whole world. Uh, PN will have no jobs, doctors will have not much jobs because it's all robotic. And uh, like that, uh, most of the jobs will be disappearing, uh, but there will be new jobs to repair those robotics. So we are now uh, focusing on STEM education, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. To do uh, science, you need many, many students 
but we, in our country we don't we find that a lot of students are going away from science uh, our ratio is that science stream is about uh, 40 percent and none or rather 30 non science is nearly 68 right that is arts commerce but in Singapore, Malaysia, all these countries, the ratio is yours. The science is 70% in the school level. So to capture students into the science, that we use this technology. That is to teach astronomy from the beginning. Um, so any space sciences, that is why this uh, uh, subject is very important for the development of the country, not to teach only astronomy, but to capture students. Because the kids like two things at, at, at a young age. One is uh, astronomy, other one is dinosaurs. This is all over the world, this is the same. So when they like it, and why not we use astronomy to divert them into the um, this field? And they found that uh, many people, those who are having uh, you know, some career, when they ask, when did they, they have, have decided this career? About uh, when are girls at 12, year 12, and the boys when they are at age 14. Um, so, the, uh, and that decision has taken in a one small event. Uh, more, I mean, 80% of the people have taken in a like, uh, you know, astronomy obsession camp, they will decide, oh, I will want to become a scientist. Right? One single event. Uh, so that is why this um, extracurricular work, webinars like this and all these things are very important. So astronomy is all is not only for you know physics, but it is mathematics, chemistry, geology, bio, bio, biology, astrobiology. Is there. all sciences are there. So uh, this is how the trend in this country has developed uh, so far. That is to with the in, introducing these subjects into the astronomy. Uh, uh, right, so uh, astronomy in the, in the university it was introduced in the and in 1996, uh, okay, I think you can hear me. 1996, uh, um, uh, can you hear me? Hello. We can hear you. Yeah. So, 96, this particular telescope was established in Arthur C. Clarke Institute. Uh, that I was involved in this thing, and myself and uh, there are two other people. Uh, we, yeah, we, we made the specifications. Uh, and when the telescope came, nobody in the country was uh, there to, 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 to harbor this thing. The university said, we don't want. IFS said we don't want, and then finally Arthur C. Clarke Center agreed, um, and, and everybody said this is a white element. So, so you see how difficult to, to develop uh, uh, develop astronomy and space science in a country like Sri Lanka. A lot of barriers. Still, we are having barriers. You want to you want to have you know this telescope was installed. Um, uh, in a place where we cannot have much observations, of course, because the sky is full of uh, you know clouds and light pollution, etc. But there, is, there was no other place at that time to have it. So somebody is having their mic on. I think uh, you can ask them to mute it. If someone is there, so can you please un un mute your mics? Okay, uh, so this is that, that telescope. So that is how the trend is started. With, with the installation of this one, it's a kind of a research type telescope. Um, now uh, we are in the space age, and with this, of course, uh, uh, we started many other things like uh, this. So this has a fully, fully fledged one. Now, recently, University of Colombo also got uh, not so big, but uh, uh, something similar to this one. Uh, so this has photometer. Uh, and then uh, the, the spectrometer, CCD camera, and telescope. So all these things are there. Uh, so uh, I was involved in even installing it one, this one. Uh, that is how the, the trend started. And the group was established uh, with, uh, with my uh, selection with other people and together. So this uh, Saraj was taken, 
in Janaka and um, so they are now uh, working. So this is the telescope and now how they are cleaning it and all. But still I am in the board of the Arthur C. Clark Institute. Um, those days I was principal research scientist. Uh, so the pictures taken from this one. Uh, so like that. Now, uh, okay, so I don't want to go into all these details. Right, and then he started the um, workshop as well. Uh, then uh, recently Arthur C. Clarke Institute this uh, water boost record. Now, you know that to have some kind of interest among the infrastructure development, of course, you can even with water, you can do it. How to send the space uh, rockets. Uh, <clears throat> but rockets were sent uh, some time ago, uh, also in 1950, uh, I think 52 or 55 uh, from Nalanda College. There was a club which uh, sent uh, real uh, rockets, but due to lack of interest, it died. Uh, then, um, then I had a proposal again. Has has uh, several times we had uh, signature, you know, attempts to so launch rockets in from our country, um, and uh, the the politicians were not so interested. They said that you can take data from India. But I, we know that India doesn't give data like that. And they, they are very, you know, uh, the way data we want, they will not give even uh, either. And then uh, there was an agreement with uh, Surrey University recently, uh, some time ago, about 10, 20 years ago, not 10, about 15 years ago, uh, to use missile heads uh, removed by uh, Russia, and that to remove the nuclear head and then use those uh, uh, warheads to install a satellite and Surrey University agreed to launch two satellites, one at 740 kilometer orbit and the other one at uh, geostationary orbit, Clark's orbit, right? That's 36,600 kilometers from the Earth's surface or 42,000 kilometers from the center of the Earth. But, and the agreements were even signed and it was free, but due to some political problem, it later it has gone to China. Uh, Chinese uh, people wanted to launch a rocket. Uh, I would not want to discuss the, the details. I will be in trouble, maybe. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> so um, uh, that project also cancelled, and uh, the, 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 there was this space uh, something candy. They have also got in, involved and some political influence. Uh, but uh, that uh, space. Uh, uh, ship launch saying that Sri Lankan post satellite and all uh, it was actually a uh, Chinese part. Then recently this uh, Ravana one was sent, but that was uh, also part uh, built in uh, Japan. Uh, so we are now trying to, I will, if I have enough time, we can explain about our program. Uh, we are trying to now develop our own thing at Arthur Clark Institute and as well as several other places, uh, the, the things are happening mm, uh, in Colombo University, Peradeni University, uh, things are happening now. Um, so uh, that is uh, about the space uh, uh, science or the rocket uh, um, scenario, uh, because it's very expensive to launch a rocket rather than building, it's not that is difficult, very easy. I mean, in the, the one new or three um, uh, cube sets. Uh, but um, uh, let us see, this is uh, our one. Another giant uh, leap uh, is that uh, starting this um, Olympiad uh, by myself uh, in uh, 2007 or so. Um, so um, and then, uh, of course, in addition to this one. Uh, so, sorry. This I will just go through. So the Olympiads in 2700. So there is a now huge amount of interest to astronomy with this Olympiad because those days people started uh, to learn astronomy for their, for their curiosity. Now you have an examination, you are getting gold and silver medal and etc. And they also considered even for a level um, selection of uh, universities in certain cases and also uh, the selected people are, are sent to uh, three international Olympiads, sorry, two, right? Uh, so these are some of the pictures. Uh, so, yeah, I don't want to show these details to you. Now you know how the development has taken in a 
place where you cannot uh, observe the sky properly due to pollution. But in the absence of any other place to install, at least because Japanese people said that they will not give it uh, after 1995 December, they will uh, quit the award. So we were hurried to fix it in somewhere. Uh, actually, we plan to fix it in uh, someone, uh, someone is called uh, um, this Mahavali area uh, in one of the Kansas, some place. Mm, but uh, we found that 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 mountain drift is drifted slowly. So that is also not good, uh, such a place. Uh, so uh, that is what has, uh, how it has happened. Um, uh, so in, in detail, we can discuss about uh, some of our space program. Uh, later, uh, maybe uh, after Janata, I will talk later. Uh, okay, sir. So, uh, next, uh, I would like to know from Janaka, sir. Uh, Janaka, sir, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what are the ongoing projects like Ravana 1 in Arthur Park Institute? And can you explain a bit about the Ravana 1 project? Yes, uh, I will do that. Uh, but uh, I am not the right person exactly to talk about the Ravana 1 project uh, because you know that I am uh, particularly attached to uh, the astronomy division. Uh, this project was uh, completely uh, just uh, supervised uh, and then uh, the project was completed by uh, under the communication division. So the communication division, uh, uh, there are so many engineers involving in that very much on that area. But I will give some overview about the project uh, with some slides. So I will share again a few slides with you. Uh, okay. So let me share this slide with you. Okay, now, uh, so we have uh, go through that uh, some projects of what we are doing at the other Clark Institute. So I think you can see uh, the screen right now. Uh, now, just an introduction about uh, this uh, very uh, a milestone. I mean, uh, in the space technology, we have passed a milestone, right? Uh, if I say like that, it is. I think you agree with me because now we had had a, a, a kind of a, a idea about, uh, or maybe at least a idea about what is a satellite, right? So the satellite technology we were actually discussing from a long time back. You know that the Arthur C. Clarke Institute uh, was the first person to introduce. The this concept, satellite concept, right, in 1945. So in 1945, Adhasi Institute, this uh, Adhasi uh, introduced this uh, uh, the concept to the world, but it came uh, reality uh, in 1959 with the Sputnik 1 by the Soviet uh, the first satellite. So then after that, uh, those, those uh, countries uh, like uh, USA and uh, Russia, those two countries uh, in a race of uh, space, and then just putting those lot of satellites one by one and then they came up to uh, uh, a level of that everybody the other countries also get into that uh, the space race like china india and then uh, japan and all these but we are still uh, we were struggling on that to make at least a small satellite a part of a satellite in past uh, few decades uh, although uh, we are uh, we are having the name of that Arthur C. Clarke Institute from uh, uh, from him. Uh, so uh, we were actually came to that uh, milestone in last year. So we were able to send a small satellite called CubeSat. Right? Right? These are called CubeSats. Cube means um, uh, this is a one 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter cube so these cube sets are very small but anyway uh, these satellites have all the, the basic satellite functionalities are there so that means they have to launch it and then they have to uh, these satellites has to uh, launch it and then it goes in an orbit right around the earth 
as well as we were able to communicate with the satellite. So we should be able to communicate with the satellite. So in that all these uh, aspects of the satellite uh, functionality, we were successful at the moment. Why? Because uh, the Sri Lankan first nano satellite development program was launched in 2017. Uh, so in that time also uh, our director general uh, engineer Sanatana and Nikki actually leading, uh, he has made a leading role in that. And then we had uh, two opportunities. We sent, uh, we had a collaboration with Samara University as well as we had a collaboration with Kyushu Institute of Technology Japan, which is actually just uh, running that uh, the BIRD3 program. Uh, this BIRD3 program is actually uh, uh, running under the Kyushu Institute of Technology Japan. So they actually also uh, joined with us and then we were able to send two engineers uh, to our uh, two engineers from our uh, Arthur Clark Institute. Uh, maybe you have seen now, you can see here those two engineers. Uh, one uh, is uh, Tarindu and the other one is, uh, 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 I, I just, uh, yes, uh, uh, I, I, I forgot the name. Uh, somebody is uh, just, uh, okay. hello, is it clear? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Uh, so the uh, Tarindu and uh, uh, Dulani, uh, we, we were sent at those two engineers to the Kyushu Institute of Technology. Uh, so that World 3 program. And that World 3 program, they developed uh, a CubeSat, which is called Ravana 1. So you already know about that. Everybody knows about that uh, last uh, year we launched it. Uh, and the successfully launched it in last year, June. Uh, then you can see uh, uh, these two actually engineers were successfully made this uh, one. And uh, here, uh, this is the group. Uh, so uh, this program was actually done with the Nepal group as well, the Japan, Nepal, and Sri Lanka. Those three groups uh, co combined uh, in this bird three program and they made their own satellites. Uh, so then launch it at once. So you can see here, our satellites is over here. It's a very small tube set, but uh, all the functionalities as, uh, as usual as a big satellite is there. So therefore, now, uh, now these are the, uh, the images. Now, this is the first time we got images uh, from our own satellite, the Sri Lanka, the, the, Sri, the image over the Sri Lanka. And you can see the Indian Ocean, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the ocean as well as the part of Sri Lanka. So this is this image was taken by Ravana one satellite. And uh, yeah, this is another one uh, here. Now like that, we have taken several images. Yes, uh, when the, the the satellite is uh, just passing over Sri Lanka, so we have to take the pictures, and that means we need a communication. Uh, system, we need a communication station. The communication station is also at the Arthur C. Clark Institute, right? So that is another very uh, uh, successful uh, program because uh, one group actually made it uh, this cube set at uh, Japan, Kyushu University. The other group in Sri Lanka, uh, with the same time, they were made uh, this uh, receiving station at the Arthur C. Clark Institute. So now I will uh, show you. This is the, uh, the receiving station at the Arthur C. Clark Institute. This receiving station is completely built by our own engineers. You can see here the Kavindra Sampath, uh, who is, has uh, taken the responsibility to uh, build up this uh, satellite ground station in Sri Lanka. So under the uh, supervision of uh, that uh, head of the the division Kavindra Jayavardhana, the engineer. Uh, so the Kavindra Sampat, uh, he is an uh, engineer in our institute. He was able to build uh, this entire uh, station. This is small, but uh, all this communication can be done. Even those images, you can see, these images was taken by him. Right? So it's a very successful. Now we can 
communicate with the satellite as well as we can take the images whenever we need when it is passing over Sri Lanka. So that's uh, still uh, uh, this satellite is going around uh, the earth. You know, this is a small satellite and it doesn't have a maneuvering uh, 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 maneuvering ability. That means it doesn't have a fuel or any uh, uh, orbital controlling mechanism. It's just moving uh, with the initial speed, initial projection. But after some time, with the uh, uh, with the resistance of the Earth uh, atmosphere, it will decay the orbit. So the orbit will decay the orbit, and it will sometimes uh, later, maybe after six months or maybe after one year, that is the lifetime of usual lifetime of CubeSat. After one year or maybe six months later, uh, this satellite will actually just uh, come down, and then uh, it will crash into the uh, atmosphere so we won't be able to use it again so, so however this uh, satellite was really uh, uh, a nice one as well as uh, the cost wise it is uh, not really uh, uh, in, uh, not, not really high so therefore uh, it is very uh, worth uh, satellite program to uh, go with that uh, hello so, uh, uh, I can see uh, some uh, uh, drawings going on in my screen. Uh, hello. Sorry, sir. Yeah. I can see some drawings going on my screen. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, no, okay, sir. All right. Okay. Right. So, here, uh, so this is this is the, uh, the, the program what we are doing right now. And uh, so, these are the, some of the engineers work with uh, us in the uh, satellite program as well and the other uh, the programs also uh, you can see the further now uh, we are going to uh, make some testing uh, facilities now when you look at the satellite the satellite has to be tested before we send it to the orbit there are a lot of testing has to be made to achieve the uh, flight model so the before the flight model to get that uh, certification of the flight model, we have to make sure that satellite will, will not be destroyed during the flight, during the uh, orbital uh, motions uh, to put into the orbit. So therefore, there are different uh, testings has to be done. So this is one of the testing uh, cage. You know, this is a magnetic cage, and uh, uh, the magnetic fields also getting affected. Uh, the Earth's magnetic field get affected by these satellite uh, movements and all because the magnetic torques they are different torques right magnetic torque gravity gradient torque and all these uh, torques can change the orbit of the satellite so we have to analyze all, all these uh, before we send it how they react with the magnetic field so this is a one uh, uh, setup we made it by these engineers uh, to test uh, the magnetic effect on the satellites the magnetic cages so these are some of these uh, projects at the moment uh, that's going on in the other c Clark institute based on this particular satellite program uh, so uh, i think i will stop it here and then uh, i can go to the, some other sections later on with my slides uh, this is what we are just doing something uh, related to a satellite program So we found that Ravana one project was so interesting. So uh, my last question for Professor Chandana, how Sri Lankan undergraduates get involved with these uh, projects or researchers? Is there a specific procedure and what should be improved to join these researchers? Actually, um, uh, that uh, right now, uh, of course, uh, we have uh, now, in the fourth year of the university, we give uh, research uh, projects. Uh, already, I think, more than uh, 20, 30 astronomy and space related projects they have completed uh, so far. In addition, uh, we have about uh, about 15 um, uh, MS, MPhil and postgraduate, uh, that is uh, uh, PhD students I have, uh, working on uh, various areas of uh, of um, of uh, astronomy right now i want to show it but my one of these uh, slides have just got stuck 
uh, in the meantime, I will just show you one thing that is, uh, it, it was actually uh, joined project with the Arthur Clark Institute, one of my students uh, who was taken here as Hera. Um, so it's difficult to show this thing for some reason. Uh, I don't know what is happening. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. In uh, shy is okay. I'll try to show the screen with uh, mm. doesn't open up. Uh, okay, so what is happening now? Anyway, I have no, uh, just to speak without the um, uh, slides, it seems that is, uh, we are working on, uh, uh, yes. We'll stop sharing this thing. Uh, right now, we are working on. Uh, I can try to anyway. Um, uh, various things. Uh, one is that is uh, we have already built a built a, um, uh, a underground magnetometer, uh, which can uh, uh, used. It is a. It's called. Uh, uh, Magdas 9, uh, that is the joint to a, um, uh, <coughs> well, I, it may be able to, I may be able to uh, get this open uh, presentation, but it doesn't respond. I think it's two. Okay, yes. Uh, okay. And I think you can see me now, some of my slides. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Uh, so, so these are, you know, some of the, this is a little bit, uh, uh, one is study of gamma ray emission. Uh, these are all under PhD level uh, work. Huh? Influence of dark energy on gravitational lensing. Uh, then uh, this Janaka himself was doing uh, one thing earlier, Delta scrutiny type is task using uh, multicolor photometry and high resolution spectroscopy, uh, space with and geometric electrodynamics, uh, then on the construction of a magnetic data system in Sri Lanka and, and to study the equatorial project. Uh, then study of uh, late type of stars uh, 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 and then uh, analysis of type two and type three solar radio burst using Ecalisto system. Uh, then establishment of wild, uh, wide field telescopic system compatible with all sky camera uh, to observe, uh, you know, uh, meteorites coming in. Uh, so uh, like that, uh, the, that is only part. We have more. A uh, lot of all, all those were actually um, postgraduate level ones. Undergraduates are also do, simultaneously doing with that, basically on solar studies and commerce, etc. Uh, so this is one of the space science means, uh, space weather is part of it, that uh, you see when something happened in the sun, 
the charged particles comes to the earth and it get it get influenced so this is the latest um, uh, research that uh, area uh, that is our weather is dependent on the space weather that is effect of the sun so many people are now studying about this thing uh, so interplanetary space what we call uh, so that um, the space between the sun and the earth etc the what is happening there so uh, these charged particles come and uh, penetrate the magnetic field of the earth right? and then uh, it can influence the earth uh, and uh, and uh, this uh, started actually uh, you see that there was in 1990 um, uh, 90s that uh, uh, a big uh, blackout in canada uh, causing um, um, you know uh, a city out of electricity for several days and they found that it was because that uh, induced current uh, in the underground cables was by uh, uh, the charged particles coming to the earth from the sun and disturbing the uh, magnetic field uh, so it was in cubic in, in 1989 that happened and people later discovered that this they couldn't find the reason you can see the down here what has happened to the underground cables uh, so the whole city was in the dark and then uh, they knew that it was a problem where after some time caused by the sun. So since then this field has emerged because to protect our satellites from the solar bursts and uh, this is coronal mass suggestions we call CMEs. And one way of doing it is that is uh, we measure this magnetic field. Uh, you see, you can see a solar flare coming out and Earth is such a small one compared to that. Um, so uh, this energy, when it comes to the Earth, and they will enter into the Earth and cause for uh, auroras, but aurora is not the, it's not, it's very ha harmless. Uh, but uh, there is a, there are magnetic field disturbances. Uh, and uh, you can see, uh, look, this is, uh, and how it effect is that it, it can affect uh, all the solar uh, disturb the satellite computer system by damaging the electrical solar cells and uh, we have to reboot the satellite again and uh, interior charging, drug effect, uh, surface effect and atmospheric currents will cause other communication problems particularly to the uh, passenger airlines uh, and then induce currents in the closed circuits uh, wherever you have. So when you have uh, such a solar burst, now the satellites close to the sun will inform us so that uh, it will come within two or three days, the charged particles will come and hit the earth. So before that, we will adjust our electricity generation systems in the world, right? Uh, so it is a very important area, therefore, uh, and even to protect satellites. So you have satellites kept in several places in between sun and the earth. And the last one is, on the earth and that is what we have done actually so we compare those uh, observations the magnetic field changes with the data from these satellites uh, so this is the, the selection was done because you know our, our magnetic field has a equator like the earth's equator north south and that e equator goes in this line right. uh, colombo candy Nagal, such Area. So on the magnetic equator, we call DP equator. Uh, that we installed one of these. This is the uh, Japanese support that we got. Actually, uh, Janak was very helpful for this one. Uh, so uh, that we went all over the places in the world, country to find a suitable place because uh, this um, uh, magnetometer can detect uh, even the slightest magnetic field that if uh, uh, within 500 meters, if a bicycle or a vehicle goes, it has a disturbance. So we have to keep it underground and away from uh, a road. So to find such place and all, finally we found a place in Dombe and then and this is how we construct it. You see, these are all uh, very cutting in technology actually in Sri Lanka, what we do. Uh, and then uh, we get this thing, uh, the magnetic field of the earth is measured in XYZ directions. Uh, in even in uh, micro sessions uh, with the, and then it will be the data will be uploaded um, to the net uh, magdas network uh, ours is the 55th uh, station when 
I think first was the second station on the geometric equator. So we also get data from other stations to, and to our students are doing research on this. Uh, so it is a very good thing actually uh, because uh, we contribute to the whole world and uh, end result is that to protect our satellite systems uh, from solar burst and then then and communication with the uh, flights and uh, protecting of uh, electricity power supply in the world uh, all, all over the world uh, precautions can be taken depending on the uh, on the the solar bus size etc so a lot of research is going on in this area this is another one gamma emission from uh, from the blazers uh, it is uh, actually the data are very uh, jointly with uh, Utah University uh, so most of the research we do with different other universities jointly and this uh, these data is still uh, they are called uh, what is called uh, with some security so you cannot uh, give it out um, uh, till three years some of the data it's a top secret data also uh, so but uh, we do this this is one student is doing this kind of work uh, and then uh, I think we since we don't have time to is very task this is the telescope system that we get data data very task data they are not in public domain right and giga electron volts to tera electron volts very high energy uh, data uh, com uh, coming from lasers then Lorentz invariant limit uh, and the speed of light whether it is constant or not that is one study that we are doing now or uh, whether there is a only Einstein said that C is the maximum limit. So we are trying to find uh, uh, the the speeds greater than light. So some evidence are still there. Uh, with uh, this is one student is doing that thing, right? Uh, so the time dilation, length contraction. Uh, because what we do is that when a supernova or some galactic explosion takes place, uh, we study different uh, colors uh, separately and the arrival time uh, and found that uh, it should be same you no know, speed the speed of light but it is not the same yeah, so that is uh, with uh, gamma and various various regions in the spectrum uh, we do that uh, so then other ones are this moon studies of uh, surface moon surface uh, and um, then this is another is, is one the gravitational lensing so far in the world, the people thought that the gravitational lens is caused by a huge, heavy galaxy-like object, and so that you can see far away objects through this one. That is a way to see the, the, the distance objects uh, using a lens like the effect. So this is an example, a far away star can be seen uh, due to this lens in effect, and here and here, two places, for example, in this picture. But it's, it is in different uh, circle circles you can see. Uh, so uh, these studies, uh, so people in the in the world so far they have used a stationary galaxy. But uh, now we are using that uh, if the object is moving, what is the effect? So we found that it, that's a big effect. So that is one study, and and this is related with the expansion of the universe. Uh, finding the data uh, uh, accurately. So this is that one one student. Another student is doing uh, this one is of course the telescope uh, that is uh, meteorite detecting system. And then this is our Janet's uh, another work in uh, uh, oscillation of delta student type stars. The oscillations inside the star is detected. It's a very very difficult work uh, by, uh, with observations. In far far away time, how the oscillations are taken, uh, so that interior can be studied. Uh, so this is what uh, Janak is doing right now, uh, and a uh, lot of papers we have published, of course. Then uh, this is another one that is uh, a cometary uh, research that is another with NASA jointly with some NASA institute we are doing it. Um, uh, the comet uh, behavior of comets uh, and their rotation period, etc. And uh, this is another one that is uh, impact of asteroid to the Earth. What is the impact and risk assessment? This is an undergraduate project, of course. Uh, is doing by us, uh, and then uh, of course some other. 
satellite data on changes of sun's outer atmosphere using digital domain. This is also an undergraduate project, but most are. So many, many projects are there. I don't think I should go into the details. Mm, uh, so you understand that uh, though the many people don't understand, we do a lot of uh, international level research with collaboration uh, with USA, Japan, India, uh, uh, then uh, uh, UK, uh, several uh, countries um, are involved. Uh, so uh, right now, uh, I think uh, I think we are in a good place uh, compared to now. You can remember recently we discovered uh, uh, as joint project uh, that is uh, a planetary system also. I don't want to show it now because the time is up, but. Uh, so I hope uh, that uh, we are not in a bad position compared to the uh, world outside, because even in India, with so much of millions of people, the planetary system was uh, discovered only two years ago, but we did it in last year. Uh, so, uh, so that is uh, a good uh, indication that uh, even from Sri Lanka, we can do, uh, you know, cutting type uh, astronomy and space science work. Uh, so the trends are very good, I would say. Yes, you can carry on, uh, Janaka. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, those things are very, uh, very useful for us. Uh, so next, uh, I would like to move to Janaka, sir. Uh, and most of the students have a problem. How students can apply for the Arthasi Club Institute and how they can enroll with the project there? Yes, uh, so I will continue uh, uh, your question as well as I will continue uh, some of the uh, projects we are carrying out. So then it may be useful uh, to the students, uh, those who are looking at the opportunities uh, in other C Clark Institute. So I will uh, share the slides uh, again and then uh, let's go over the uh, rest of the slides. Uh, I think you can see the slides now. Yes, uh, so here, uh, yeah, as uh, Professor Jayaratna also explained that uh, we started about the astronomy and astrophysics research. Now, the Professor Jayaratna clearly shows that how we actually continue from uh, 18th century, I mean early 18th century also, we had some uh, experience about astronomy and uh, we how we came to the modern astronomy. So the modern astronomy uh, was started with the establishment of this telescope. Uh, so I'm, I'm very proud of that. Professor uh, Jayaratna is a part of that uh, program. So actually with this telescope, uh, the Sri Lankan modern astronomy has started because uh, I would say that uh, when I'm actually looking my uh, uh, research for my undergraduate project uh, in BSc in Kalambu, so I wanted to do astronomy project, but at that time this telescope was there, uh, but no one has started any astronomy related project in Sri Lanka. So then I remember what I actually asked from Professor Jayaratna. I went to Professor Jayaratna because he was the only person uh, who is actually involved in that uh, the astronomy in Sri Lanka. So I'm very proud of him. So, uh, uh, so he said, okay, we can do, we can start. So that's the way we started about uh, doing astronomy. Uh, and then after that, as a result of that, I was able to join the other Sikhlak Institute also. So this is good for the others also to the students. Now, uh, now we have started already the, the research and this uh, in especially in the research in astronomy and astrophysics and we have come a long way after that uh, project so a uh, lot of undergraduates were looking for uh, research in astronomy and astrophysics and then we have uh, collaborated with the uh, university of colombo and the other c Clark Institute because we had the observation facility is this telescope so then uh, the project uh, just came off again and again every year the number of students actually to get uh, involved more and more in the projects. Now we are in a good position as Professor Jayaratna says. We are in a very good position. We are uh, actually looking for different areas as well. Now earlier we depend on this telescope. Now uh, we depend, uh, we just have different uh, uh, 
systems uh, like uh, Magda's projects, as Prasidhara mentioned, that we have also different uh, systems in our RTC Craft Institute. So uh, the projects are going on right now. So these are some of the areas we are looking in uh, we are looking in astronomy research and as well as astronomy popularization programs also with this based on this telescope 45 centimeter cassette telescope which is the largest in the country at the moment and uh, this is a research carried out uh, in Arthur C. Clark Institute uh, and uh, the Arthur C. Clark Institute, uh, the, my, my uh, division head is Saraj Gunasekara, the principal research scientist Saraj Gunasekara and Professor Jayaratna and there's another research uh, scientist uh, called Mahesh Kerat. So those three, three uh, were able to discover a planetary system using Kepler data. So this is a huge impact on our astronomy in last year so we were able to discover uh, a planetary series two sub neptunian planets in the uh, uh, light curve data so uh, so this is a very uh, very good discovery from our side from the uh, from we think about the astronomy and astrophysics so we have done that project and then uh, he is still involved in uh, this uh, in the project. Now we have created the exoplanet group in our institute. Exoplanet group. So that planet group is working on with the uh, principal research scientist Saraj Gunasekar as well as Professor Jairat also involved and uh, uh, Mr. Mahesh also involved in that section. And then uh, there are some other groups also involved in our uh, institute. Uh, study and investigation inter international uh, internal characteristic of uh, SU UMA conduct binary stars. Basically, this uh, project is based on uh, catalysmic variables. Catalysmic variables mean supernova, uh, then uh, uh, the, the supernova, then uh, the emission line uh, novas like that. So basically, uh, the emission stars uh, are uh, studying they are just studying the emission stars, supernova explosion as well. So this is the one project uh, carried out by uh, one of our scientists, uh, Mr. Uh, Indika Adekan uh, with the collaboration of Chinese Academy of Science, Yunnan Observatory, uh, Chinese Academy of Science. So uh, this is my group. Actually, I'm uh, working on this area. Uh, my PhD is going on at the moment in this area. I'm working on astroseismology. And this is uh, basically a relatively new in astronomy because now if you want to study the internal structure of the of a star, so it is very difficult because what we are looking from the data, it is almost uh, the data is the light, right? It is always coming from the photosphere. So it is very difficult to get the information uh, in, in, in deep. Right in different layers in uh, in uh, inside the star. So this is a one technique. This is the only technique actually to look at the inside of the star. So it is a very uh, different uh, area as well as a very complex area when you uh, look at the astrophysics uh, in research. So you can actually join with these groups as well, right? If you are interested about that, we are now having different groups as well in astronomy. So that's why. It is, we are in a very good position in astronomy Sri Lanka. So at uh, the collaborations in astronomy, now there are some different collaborations like uh, Professor Jarad says, so the, the university also actually collaborating with different uh, uh, institutes in the world. So we also have some collaboration, basically the observation collaborations. Uh, one is uh, I'm actually collaborating with uh, APT Arizona. This is a, a small telescope array. Uh, which is uh, dedicated for astroseismology observation, and also uh, there's another observatory, remote observatory uh, in Spain, uh, and uh, this is the one actually I'm very much involved in that uh, in Mount Abu Observatory, India. So this telescope uh, I used it uh, so many observations for my observations in my PhD program, and of course Yunnan Observatory also we are working with that. So this is international collaboration. And there's another opportunity uh, we have established in Arthur C. Clarke Institute called 
uh, e-callisto program. Uh, this is about the radio astronomy. Uh, now, uh, optical astronomy, we, we are basically involved in optical astronomy. This is a one opportunity we can go to the radio astronomy observation. Radio astronomy. This is a completely different part in astronomy. So, uh, the, this facility uh, is able to detect the solar flares, radio emissions of the solar flares, radio emission of the solar flares. So, the solar flares are a very complex structure, mechanism, which is not yet completely known, right? So, we have to uh, learn a lot of things about solar flares. So, it's a very good uh, area to study. Uh, those who like to join about the solar physics, in the solar physics area, so this is an ideal opportunity, uh, those who are interested. Because I'm, we are looking for the students to get involved in those. Now, at the moment at Abbasi Clark Institute, so the, the capacity is very limited. And we want uh, the students to get involved in this area, so then we can increase the capacity. So we can build different groups in astronomy. So the Professor Jarrah is also there from the University of Colombo, and from our side, we can actually supervise that. So then we can get more and more students for their uh, postgraduate studies in this area. So uh, these facilities are available. I invite all the students. Uh, basically, this is, uh, I think, a place for uh, university students as well as other students. So I invite university students to get involved in this, uh, just know about these uh, potential areas. And if you are interested, please get involved in these research projects. So this is another opportunity. And uh, this is the, uh, actually uh, the system we built it in Arthur C. Clark Institute to detect the solar flares, radio burst. Uh, and future plans we have, uh, so you know that uh, this telescope is, uh, I mean, uh, quite old now, not real. I mean, still working very nicely. But the problem is the observation uh, limitations because it is located in a very bad uh, observation uh, uh, bad sky location. Uh, uh, it is not favorable for observation the the sky. So therefore, we are looking for the uh, National Astronomical Observatory for Sri Lanka. Another huge huge telescope for Sri Lanka. Uh, it will be like a 1.5 meter telescope, but this project is really big as well as a, a, a very, a very uh, uh, expensive uh, project. I uh, don't know uh, when we are going to start this one, but we have put the proposal to the government to, be, uh, to go for a National Astronomical Observatory. But uh, this is the cost of the observatory, so you can see it's a huge uh, uh, project, uh, so millions of dollars. Uh, and this is another plan and we have it because that the early project is really big and a lot of investments needed. This can be done with a uh, quite uh, low budget. Uh, this is we have a 14 inch tele robotic telescope, or a 14 inch telescope we have. So we wanted to make this facility uh, to have a small observatory from a very good location and then for uh, operated, uh, remotely operated telescope facility. So no need to go there. And then we can do uh, the UBVRI photometry, high resolution spectroscopy, all these uh, instruments are there. And the aim of this observatory, small observatory, is to observation facility can be located to the university students based on the proposal submissions. Now you have seen uh, in the other countries also, they have made these small observatory systems. So therefore, uh, the observatory time, the observation time can be allocated for the students. So then we are getting the proposal from the students as well. So that is a very good option uh, if we come, come up with this facility. So we try our best to put uh, this observatory in next few years. So these are the future plans. There's another one, uh, the enhancement of that Calisto system, solar radio observation center. And uh, uh, the Peradelia University is collaborating with us uh, to develop the RF electronics, radio electronics part. Uh, and uh, it's a very good collaboration. Uh, so they are just developing the RF components. Uh, uh, they have agreed to develop the RF components with us at the moment. So this is the project we suppose. And these are the opportunities. See that 
Now, uh, we have research engineers, we have research scientists, uh, engineering assistants, and we are taking the trainees as well. So if you become, uh, uh, if you graduated, you can become a research engineer in our institute or research scientist. But before you graduate, uh, in the undergraduates also, you can come as a trainee. Uh, there are internships, final year projects you can do in these areas. Now, whatever I explained in that, final year projects can be uh, done with these areas. So we can make a proposal and then you can collaborate with the university. Now, there are a lot of students actually coming from Columbia University as well as the other universities also right now. So we are doing workshops as well, astronomy workshop, astronomical data analysis workshops uh, in meantime here and there for one or two per year. So you can join the course as well. So those are the opportunities. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities so you can find out in, in uh, our institute. So I invite to see the, uh, the possibilities uh, with the I mean, this is only for the astronomy division, right? So I'm looking for, I mean, this is common for the other divisions also. I mean, when you look at uh, the other satellite programs or maybe other projects, there are some uh, uh, opportunities in the other divisions as well. And these, these are some of the popularization programs we are carrying out. Uh, this is very useful for the school students, uh, school leavers, school students. So we are providing that also. And this is, uh, uh, that is what we actually discuss uh, 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 later on um, just a while ago by Professor Jayaratna last year, uh, the last year, I think uh, the 2018, we uh, had this uh, International Astronomy Olympiad in Sri Lanka. So uh, we uh, we had uh, done that uh, practical test in our the RC Clark Institute. These are the, some pictures of that. And you can see the publication. So I invite you to see uh, read the publications also uh, regarding these uh, astronomy projects. So then you can get some good idea about uh, what are we are doing uh, at the moment in astronomy and space science. So you can see more information in our website. So with that, I uh, uh, conclude uh, my presentation. So if you have any questions, we can dis discuss uh, from this point onwards. Thank you very much. So guys, this is your chance. Now you can raise any questions if you have. So you just can unmute your mic and speak up. Uh, so please take this time for that. I think I think in the chat box we have find a question that can yes. someone from an international university get involved with these projects. Yes, uh, uh, you can join, of course. Uh, uh, but um, of course, uh, uh, whether it is for a MPhil or a PhD, you, you can uh, use um, kind of supervisor from your university and supervisor from Columbia University, for example, and join with Tataka Center or uh, separately, you can uh, start. Uh, so that is uh, that kind of project we are doing now, right? Um, that is one question. Uh, and then, uh, so I would like to do a research on space debris. Will you help me out with it? I am a grade 11 student, so I have no idea. Now, grade 11 students, of course, uh, uh, should pass A level, I, I suppose, uh, to uh, and uh, go to the university, and then it is better to start uh, because we have, it is difficult for us to give you a very high caliber research project uh, with uh, this grade 11 knowledge. Uh, even you can write uh, Olympiad, for example, to that matter. Uh, space debris, of course, we have done uh, actually. Uh, President uh, at that time was President Mahindra Rajapaks, and his son has done uh, in the Columbia University a very good uh, uh, debris uh, pretty much theoretical project. Uh, uh, on, uh, there, there is a question, uh, sir. What are the universities which are teaching astronomy? I think in Sri Lanka, sir. I think they ask a question. Uh, I think the Columbia University also now right now. Yeah. Columbia University, we teach astronomy. Yeah. Um, then I have another course in Open University. Uh, 
use other universities also have some small courses uh, part of the courses it is yes yeah. uh, the samaragogo university also mr indika is doing uh, yeah. one uh, unit from there uh, yeah there are some small small uh, it's, it's just this uh, this uh, parts like uh, section they are doing in the, uh, sometimes there's elective courses uh, kind of elective courses in astronomy and space science they are conducting in different universities i think Any more questions? Many or many people have asked whether they can join NASA. Of course, uh, you think it is. Uh, everybody also says NASA is like a sort of animal. You think that it is. <laughs> uh, of course, they have about forty thousand not uh, scientists, but uh, their job security is no more. They are most of the people uh, they have categorized uh, the people in ABC like thing. They are very competitive and uh, they have also been in crisis. Uh, that is why uh, many things are going, even, even the rockets are now, uh, you know, on a higher base so they are sending. Uh, so, uh, you mean that if you have it now, I, I have about two, three students working at NASA projects, but then different laboratories, you have to go for a PhD degree and then uh, you can join to one of those projects. That is how you do, otherwise, uh, uh, and then you can uh, gradually, uh, you will be absorbed. Uh, but it is not as kind of, uh, if you want to do astronomy, you don't have to go to NASA, any any place you can do, even for Sri Lanka you can do actually. So there are, you, if you want to earn money also that uh, you have to have some job security, you know. So there is very, uh, those days it was okay, but after this, since last five years, many people are, you know, leaving uh, or just, um, Spell from NASA because of the lack of funds. Yes, uh, I think so. Now, this is uh, just uh, thank you for for Sajana, sir that uh, you have started about the postgraduate degrees in Columbia University as well. So as a result mm -hmm. of that, we are also getting all now in postgraduate degree. So earlier, uh, the students actually went uh, after the BSc, they went to US or some other country to go for the postgraduate. Now, I think uh, no need to go for, I mean, the, those who are, uh, I mean, we should stay and looking for uh, Sri Lankan opportunities. So they, they can stay there here and then find out uh, some postgraduate uh, uh, opportunities also to uh, study postgraduate degrees in Sri Lanka also. So that, that, for that uh, facilities are there in Sri Lanka right now. Excuse me, sir. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, I would like to ask a question uh, from both of you. Uh, so uh, I am I am undergraduate from Southeastern University. Uh, I am studying Earth Science. Uh, I would like to study more about planetary planetary science. Uh, is there any project uh, ongoing project uh, in Sri Lanka uh, about uh, studying uh, planets on our solar system? Uh, well, of course. So we have in Columbia University, a large number of them people are studying. I have not shown you, uh, but uh, basically uh, the surface studies, the motion of uh, clouds, uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, a lot of uh, other things uh, we do. Uh, they are there, of course. You, uh, you don't have to join to an existing project. You can we can create a project. That is the way and. Uh, um, uh, so uh, it, is, it is possible. Anything is possible, uh, of course. Now we, you know that the, the person who discovered this, uh, who was mainly known as Mahesh Sherat, discovering this new planetary system, he has taken uh, some degrees in European countries, two of them there. And then he came to Columbia University and asked me, if I want, don't want to go to go abroad. Can you help me? So without any payment, he was working with me for uh, for over a year or so uh, with a lot of research papers. And then uh, finally, this program came in the Arthur C. Clark Institute uh, about uh, uh, we were able to pay something from Arthur Clark Institute to his work. Uh, so that is uh, how he, you know, that, that means with foreign degrees, you can come here and uh, work like that. Uh, and he is also now doing for working for a PhD. And uh, recently, one guy who has taken 
he was there for, for five years in USA, for four or five years in USA uh, with some data science and all. Uh, he asked whether now after he was the best of like staying in US uh, one university. And he asked me whether he can come here and do a PhD because this doing a PhD in US is very expensive and all. Uh, unless otherwise you get uh, kind of a scholarship and all that for that of course you have to pass uh, these uh, lot of exams and particularly you have to have a class in a uh, in in a, in the bsc degree uh, in in for example in our one of our ugc approved universities so that they will uh, take you as nowadays is very difficult but it was possible those days now of course covid and various other issues uh, there are some lags so the, 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 that is the way that uh, you know that internationally um, uh, the people are coming here uh, to do work. Uh, now, for example, uh, one of my my second or third PhD student is uh, Dr. Gomez. Uh, now he's professor. He is the second, uh, if not the first, uh, uh, best uh, lightning protection person in the world. He has he was a professor in. Uh, he was in our university also, but then he left and get the professorship in Malaysia, then South Africa, conducted a lot of, uh, you know, world uh, consultation work well, with the Columbia University degree, you see. So that is why uh, you see that the degree where you get is not important nowadays. It is what is important is your quality. Yes, sir. So there's a, there's a question, can we access real-time sky observations from the internet? Uh, can we access real time sky observations from the internet? Uh, real time sky observations mean now, uh, I think you are expecting that uh, whether you can get the data uh, from a, a telescope. Uh, it is kind of a, a telescope. Now, let's say the real time means if you want to just get the night sky today, so then uh, uh, what are the internet facilities or the online facilities? To get. There are some telescopes uh, over the world uh, just, uh, just giving the, such a facility uh, to go for a real time observation, uh, but uh, you have to write uh, proposals to get the timing. Uh, it is not easy to get the timing, uh, but you can uh, put a proposal. If the proposal is really good, so they will give a timing. Uh, observation timing to use the small telescope over the internet. So these are robotic telescope which I mentioned that in our program. So we are also trying to uh, get that kind of a facility in Arthur C. Clarke Institute. Uh, so then it is very easy. No need to go there and operate it. You can uh, operate the telescope through the web. So the, you have given the permission, you have given the, uh, the access to operate the telescope, then you can get whatever the data you want through the internet. So that's what I think you are looking for. So there are some facilities, but it is still very difficult to get the uh, timings. Yeah, I can that Janaka, that is, uh, uh, I think two or three of my students are using uh, international uh, telescopes, one in Australia, they are mm -hmm. rather big ones, yes. uh, but they pay, they mm -hmm. pay and yes, yes. we pay, we pay actually, uh, the payment is less when it is closer to the full moon. So we okay. take <laughs> we take those graphs and um, these are rather one meter, two meter, very big telescopes, uh, and they get the data for yes. us. Uh, actually, in that case, you don't need the proposal. Yes. We only say that we want uh, we have a project here. Please help, yeah. and then uh, they, but we have to pay. Yes. So that is for the money. <laughs> you have to pay for that. Okay. There's another. Is there any question? If there are no questions, we can wind it up. Yes. That's a very big one. I don't know. I uh, Maybe uh, that uh, there's a question called uh, hydro meteorological data, satellite data, which it is available in Arthur C. Clark Institute. Uh, uh, actually, I cannot answer this question straight away. Uh, still, we are, uh, as uh, uh, far as I know that, uh, still we are not having the satellite data, uh, but I think uh, we have to wait for that ground station. So on, uh, until we have to uh, wait for the ground station, uh, then we can get the data from uh, different satellites. 
at the moment i think we don't have uh, such a data facility uh, to get the um, hydrometeorology data that's what uh, i think we suppose to ask about one of my students is doing uh, this one i can help him uh, he is uh, uh, Madhusanta is doing it. Actually, we are doing uh, with uh, relative position of the moon, uh, sun, and the earth, uh, whether we can forecast uh, or a model. We have designed a model to forecast weather, or at least to support a weather forecasting uh, supplementary system. Uh, that is, uh, we are undergoing and we have some data. Actually, we get data from Moa. A lot of uh, Sri Lankan data is there. We, our data can be obtained, of course, you have to pay for the med department. Otherwise, you are, we can give free, but yeah. it is uh, we cannot publish. Yes, that is the problem. I have data, but we cannot publish. We cannot publish. We have to pay them. Yes, uh, there are some questions coming on. Okay, I think uh, shall we conclude that? Yeah. I think yeah. So. so there are many questions are coming, but for the time being, we have to wrap up. So. Uh, we think that you uh, you guys found this session so interesting and knowledgeable and we hope that you gain something what you were looking for so finally let me thank professor ksp chandana chayaratna and research scientist mr janaka desuriya for accepting humbly our kind request so thank you once again both of you sir okay thank you uh, okay, we can meet again only July 4th, uh, Astrobiology and Geology session. Uh, thank you very much, all of you. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Goodbye.